All right, let's talk about this. They are well adapted for the heat. We know that, but 53 days above 110, could they be taking a toll on saguaro cacti all across the valley? Take a look. This is video of a cactus that fell right on a house in Phoenix. And our Arizona's Weather Authority Facebook page is filled right now with people sharing pictures of their fallen saguaros. So check this out. In Glendale, we see this cactus fall on a house so hard it caused part of the garage ceiling to collapse. Unfortunately, no one was hurt here and the rest of the house wasn't damaged, but certainly scary. In Tempe, our viewer Scott Charlie sent us this picture of a cactus that fell onto a driveway of his house. Oh, such a, oh, it's so sad to see this, right? And like so much these days, the moment of impact is caught on camera. So this morning, Ian is live with an expert trying to explain what the heck is going on. Is it the heat, Ian? That's what a lot of people are thinking. Uh, we're going to be chatting with that expert in a bit, test, but we wanted to first show you this sad sight. You know, in uh, many other states, if a big oak tree is struck by lightning, the whole neighborhood is saddened. Well, it's saguaros for us. And look at this thing. This thing is enormous. I just want to show you. This is just like a fraction of the saguaro. This thing probably weighs 20 to 30 pounds. Now, I am very buff, of course, so it looks seamless. But you can see what's left of this saguaro that was probably... 80 to 100 years old. We're in Tempe here, and this is what is left of this massive beauty. These things can weigh several tons when they're adults, and they are only uh, seen in the Sonoran Desert. They don't grow anywhere else in the world. A lot of times, necrosis or tissue rot uh, can cause these things to fall, or extreme wind, or wildfire, or cold. But we're going to try to find out more about the heat. This is the video of this cactus falling. It was caught on a neighbor's ring camera. You can see it's kind of a slow lurch to the right. And there she goes down to the ground. We've been seeing a whole lot of these pictures. Thank God this thing didn't land on a human weighing maybe a ton or so. It can easily decimate a car or a mailbox. I'm joined with Matthew, the homeowner here. Now, you told me that uh, your son, your young son, was kind of saddened uh, to see this happen. Yeah, Daddy Fix It was kind of the first reaction, <laughs> and I had to explain that, yeah, some things, some things in life can't be, can't be fixed, so I think there was an important life lesson in that for him. Yeah, uh, so tell me what happened. You, how did you, obviously you saw it, but uh, this well, was I Sunday. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw a young girl and her father stop in front of our house, and... We get people walking down the street, but anytime someone kind of stops right in front of your property, you wonder what's going on with that. And then I looked out and I thought, oh, that happened. And then I had to break the news to my family. And then I realized I had a missed call and text from uh, my world's greatest neighbor, Scott. <laughs> and before we even really knew this thing had fallen, he had already, I think, gotten the right tools out and uh, you know, volunteered to help me process the corpse. And so that's what we spent about the next hour doing. Okay, well, we're going to uh, chat maybe a little bit about physics because Matt is a physicist and we might learn something about uh, gravity in a bit. But we're also going to chat with some folks at the Desert Botanical Garden coming up later on to see if they have some more clues. But a sad sight to see. I don't have any of these in my yard, April. I do have uh, some cacti, yeah. low-level ones, and I know they are struggling. And yeah. these are ones that I never worried about at all. But this yeah. summer, man, it has been tough. Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, plants, not necessarily cactus, but, you know, citrus trees and other bushes around my neighborhood that are just all completely dead. You know, as a reporter, you want to try to get real close to the story. we got National Guard helicopter going overhead. That's what that noise is. Uh, you want to get real close to the story. Well, I should tell you, I've gotten a little too close to the story because I've been goosed at least three times in the dairy air by these yuccas. So... Uh, I'm going to be very careful as I make my way forward. Yeah, you know, viewers have been sending in these pictures. They've sent in video showing these massive saguaros falling down. They've crushed cars. Some have gone through roofs. We saw one uh, uh, caught on a ring camera. I mean, these are massive, massive icons of the Sonoran Desert. They only grow in the Sonoran Desert, nowhere else in the world. And they have caused damage. It is always terrible to see. It would be like your favorite oak tree if you lived in a maybe more midwestern part of town but what is causing all of this a lot of us of course thought well it's got to be the heat it's been a brutal record-breaking summer 
my knowledge is limited, so we said we're going to get some experts involved. I'm joined with Kevin from the Desert Botanical Garden. One of my bosses, I texted him your title, and he thought I said saguaro psychologist. You're a saguaro physiologist. I'm a, well, more broadly, a plant physiologist. Plant physiologist. A lot of work with saguaros, yes. So first and foremost, heat. I mean, these guys tolerate heat. Is that the culprit in, in some of these uh, fallen saguaros? Well, heat can certainly uh, uh, induce uh, quite a bit of stress in saguaros. Any other plant, I mean, you think about it, it gets up to 115 degrees here in the summertime. That's hard on pretty much anything. But that's probably not the direct cause for why they fall over. Typically, when you see them fall over, it's because they're really full of water. They've, uh, they've had a lot of rain that's taken place, and the soil is moist. And then sometimes in their monsoon season, you'll get a lot of wind, and bam, they fall over under those conditions. But long term, the heat can weaken them. So maybe they were already you know, down a bit for Could be. whatever. They had rot inside, and then this brutal summer was just the nail in the coffin for them. Could have been, especially if somebody uh, also went ahead and overwatered them in their yards. That Sometimes we see that quite uh, often. You know, a lot of people have been doing that. Since we haven't had rain, we've tried to supplement it. That's right. And you were telling me it's pretty much a sponge. These things, when they get water, they actually expand. That's correct. They'll expand quite a lot. And, you know, you look at the, the really big saguaros, the ones that have multiple arms, they can hold over 1,200 gallons of water. So think about that, eight, eight pounds a gallon. You're talking over 10,000 pounds that these things will actually weigh standing. And sometimes that weight is just too much and they'll fall over under the right conditions. And that makes sense, you know, with some of the destruction we've seen. I mean, absolutely destroying cars. So, well, maybe uh, maybe heat's not the answer. Maybe the contributing part, but don't overwater your saguaro. They are used to the desert. They can handle the heat maybe a little bit better than all of us. But uh, kind of crazy to see some yeah. of those pictures, April. Yeah. Definitely uh, causing a mess. And it's sad to see, especially if, you know, some of these things are... Yeah a hundred years old and they're getting you know 30 feet tall so uh yeah. unfortunately we we've, we've lost some good soldiers yeah. during this <laughs> summer okay no but it's really interesting you say that ian i have a lemon tree that's not doing well and a landscaper told me i'm over watering it and i think a lot of us are trying to compensate for this non soon and maybe we're killing a lot of our plants that way